This is Michaela McLean, and you're listening to Beauty by Design. Hey guys, welcome back. We have a full moon. We're going to talk all about this full moon in Sagittarius. And before we get into it, just the current happenings in my world, of course, you can go sign up for my free guide to the human design basics. Um, It's beautiful. I redesigned it recently. Highly suggested. That's going to get you on my email list as well for the day. For the day when it finally comes that I do send an email. Very exciting. (laughs) Um, So there's that. You're going to get your chart if you don't have it already. Um, And it will take you to your correct $11 one hour or a type class, which gets you all the basics that you need to know and really be able to understand and enjoy the podcast. And then from there, um, my course, your energetic marketing guide, that is also available. Um, If you're really like, I want to learn, I want to learn, learn the foundation of all of this. Um, Of course, it's going to help you market yourself in business, specifically aesthetics or health and wellness, but really I'm teaching you human design. And again, I just, I'm constantly saying it, but um, I have been diligently working away at my at 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 more stuff i'm like how much do i say training that is coming in the very near future and i am like beyond excited it's like all the pieces are there i'm i'm working and rearranging stuff and oh my gosh like hmm, it's just gonna be so good and really cool collaborations and things that are coming up things have been in the works for a long time and uh yeah there's just there's exciting stuff that's going to transpire in the near future. So again, if you're in aesthetics or adjacent professions, I highly recommend um, staying in the loop. So you can follow me over on Instagram at Michaela McLean. And yeah, let's let's get on with it. Let's talk about let's talk about this full moon. So this full moon in Sagittarius is occurring tomorrow, Saturday, June third at. 8 42 p.m pacific and the last new moon so right the where we started where we planted the seeds that was back in november november 23rd and that was actually happening in gate 34 now 34 is a sacral gate and my journal prompt for that was how can i take control of embody and own my own personal power because that is the gate of power that is part of my one and only channel so i'm i'm big love for this gate. Um, So you've had six months to marinate on that. Like, how have you taken control of and stepped into your own power, right? Definitely something to consider. I, as I was prepping this, you know, I'm always like going back, looking at things and I'm like, yes, yes, yes. Um, Just recently on on podcast with Ryan, the June transit, we talked about the six month mark and going and reviewing and giving yourself credit. So, you know, full moons, that's what this time is for. So I really encourage you to go back and and look, Um, even if you're not a journaler, what are you doing with your life? (laughs) If you're not a journaler, I, you know, just go back in your calendar or see, maybe you have a better memory than I do, but like go back and see what you can remember from that time, even photos maybe, and just like, whoa, yeah. Like a lot has happened. Okay. So we like I said, we've had six months to think on that one, marinate in that um energy and yeah, what what's what's come out of it for you. So of course, I love to use the full moon phase for the beauty and the self-care rituals that we're we're gonna harness, we're gonna use the energy of the transits, working right alongside with um, you know, like I said, in harmony with what's going on in the sky. So always, always, I suggest exfoliation because it is a physical and energetic act. You are sloughing off the past to prepare to lay the foundation for the future. Um, Or in a full moon case, you know, really it's like, okay, I'm wrapping up this cycle. I really want to exfoliate the old stuff off, right? And of course, for us that are skincare people, (laughs) my people um we know that that increases product penetration i want my actives getting in there like i want the freshest of the fresh for you know what's what's coming so um, i was like laughing too as i was prepping this episode i literally just had my face fried off by a sagittarius by rianne kelly the master esthetician um because i was just down in nashville for 
Enzi's wedding. And of course, when when in Nashville, of course, we're going to have to, you know, do all the treatments and stuff. So I was just like, oh, that's hilarious that I actually had a Sagittarius take air quotes fire to my face. I had a cool peel. <laughs> um, anyway, so you know, I had a full-blown exfoliation, if you will. Um, but you know, you can you can do something a little bit more mild, like a little dermaplane, a little little enzyme, a little whatever. Um, but you know, I I always like to throw in and remind people it's like change the sheets, change your towels, um, open the window, like let let new energy in to your space, like clean out the old, welcome in the new. So since this full moon is in Sagittarius, let's look at some ways to bring that energy into your beauty rituals. And I always love to start with keywords just to kind of connect to the vibe of, of what that sign is about. And, you know, let me pause here and say, even if you're not a Sagittarius, I'm not. Um, Sagittarius still rules some, some house in your chart. And you could also have placements that are in Sagittarius. In human design, you get you get a second set of things. So you very well could have like Sagittarius placements in your chart. You don't even know it, but it has some, some impact on your life. Every single sign does. So don't disregard this information. Like we all want to, you know, we want to tap into and use the best pieces of all of it. So keywords for Sagittarius include adventure, truth, wisdom, expansion, spontaneity, joy, freedom, exploration, and the big picture. Sagittarius really has that like wide lens view of life and the world. And Sagittarius's archetype is the teacher. It's about higher learning. And, you know, it's like the eternal student, the professional student of life. So Sagittarius is mutable fire. I always think it's like it's like wildfire, you know? It's yang energy, which is the more masculine um you know, kind of doing energy, more externalized. It's mutable fire. Um, and fire energy is always full of passion, spirit, excitement. And Sagittarius thrives on exploring, excuse me, exploring new experiences and horizons. So Sagittarius's ruling planet is Jupiter, the planet of abundance, expansion, blessings. Um, if you go back just a couple episodes, uh, one or two, I can't remember. Um, it's episode 179, uh, the June transits with me and Ryan Marquardt. We talk about Jupiter, um, Jupiter's move into Taurus. So that's kind of a like news astrologically. Um, and then of course I did an entire episode of that move, uh, episode 172, if you want to hear more just about Jupiter in general. So this is a great time you know, because this is the ruling planet, you know, to explore the the luck that the luck bringing that Jupiter does for you um, through the placements, through your placements in human design. So if you're looking at your chart, Jupiter is the fifth one up from the bottom. It looks like a fancy four. Um, and after the sun in human design, it's like the next, it's the next planet that has the most considerable neutrino impact, um, meaning we're getting a lot of energy. It's a big, but he's a big boy. So in human design, your Jupiter gates represent your own personal laws, things you need to be right with, you know, you've been imprinted with and need to obey your own sort of set of internal rules in a sense. And then you get to reap the rewards. Um, but you have to play by those rules that you've essentially, you know, your energy is kind of set with. In the gene keys, um, and this is always fun, the Jupiter placements are part of your pearl sequence, which is about prosperity. Um, when you get past the blocks, when you get past the low vibes of, <laughs> of that particular energy. So using myself as an example, I have my Jupiter is, I have the same gate on both sides. Um, and so it's gate 18, you know, so when I learn to basically... get over um, 
really the low vibe of it is the fear of judgment. It's judgment of self, judgment of others. Um, nothing's ever right. You know, nothing's ever perfect and move on. You know, it's like I'm leaning into the gift, integrity, like truly. Yeah. I'm like, I want to be in integrity and the city of it is perfection, which is kind of like this whole thing of like, the low vibe is like nothing's ever perfect you know and like oh but the high vibe is accepting that and being like but life is still perfect anyway right and kind of making yourself of service by being this sort of like you know i'm like loose terms of like perfectionism um but using it because you're very discerning i always say this is my anna wintour like editor-in-chief things need to be you know special but it's like an upgrade energy Midas touch cherry on top je ne sais quoi like all these like lovely things um but that's using it in the correct way right so make sure you know like explore that jupiter placement for yourself um it's a fun fun little research project of course there's going to be an episode for you if not more than one episode on that the the gate or gates that you have you could have two different ones um but it's it's just a great way to kind of tap into me like wow that's that could be blocking me from prosperity right jupiter wants to bless me here i need to lean into that okay so moving on you could take a salt bath to cleanse the palate before again moving on to this new cycle where we're wrapping up the end of one so i'm like enter it with intention um for Sagittarius I love the idea of a few drops of sandalwood because it's one of the oils of spiritual enlightenment um yogis would put almond and sandalwood in their hair and wear it in a rishi knot like basically a like a bun way up on the top of the head um on the crown to stimulate the pineal gland and send energy down the spinal column so you could do that get in the bath right put it in the bath put it in your hair um it's like just immersing yourself in that sandal kyle of sandalwood and um amplify it you amplify that with a clear quartz because of course clear quartz is safe for the bath water so other oils though i you know there gosh there's so many like black pepper or cardamom there's there's really nice um there's just so many that are fun to play with for sagittarius i think of sagittarius as like going to india and being in like the spice market or something you know um, crystals to work with at this time turquoise is a beautiful one very closely associated with the sign tiger's eye lapis lazuli and citrine and for people i mean like it's a full moon if you're if you're a crystal charger you know this, this is a great time to do it i just got a brand new citrine um where did i get it oh i got it in columbia down in tennessee i was like which store we whenever i'm down we always we always hit like all the crystal jobs <laughs> oh, um but this beautiful double double terminated citrine that i'm i'm excited about it's a little one i got a huge one last time anyway sagittarius um take a trip explore you know like go travel through a meal or by cooking you know doing something like world cuisine indian thai e ethiopian food i wrote the mm, I haven't had that in a while so good um you know like whatever whatever sort of food like that that you like i also think it's fun um we i married a european so like love travel um but i didn't like pretty much don't watch tv but sunday nights you know on pbs there's like the travel shows and stuff and it's just fun to um you know kind of tap into that and be like where where do we want to go next what do we want to do um so plan a trip right and then maybe that's not in the cards right now so it's like you could embody that sagittarius like exploring foreign energy through beauty products right or exotic ingredients within beauty products um did i say foreign beauty products i love korean skincare like you know just there's so many th i i that's actually it's kind of funny saying that like wherever i've been that's like my favorite thing to do you know go being in paris and going to like the pharmacies same thing with barcelona gosh one time i got in this whole long i don't even know how, how the heck long i was there talking to like the pharmacist and he and i were just going to town on skin gear products their pharmacies are so different and way cooler than ours but um that's it's just a fun way it's a fun way to travel through beauty 
you know, um, and then speaking, like I said, of exotic ingredients, Little Fox um, recently released the Jet Set Collection, which I did a custom yoga nidra for to basically help recover from jet lag. I actually use that myself um, with all the travel that I just did to kind of help um, and help with the healing too of this, of my cool feel. Um, and all the products are TSA friendly. They're like some of my favorite ones. And in fact, um, it has the pro massage nectar, which is not normally available to, for like public consumption. Um, it's just for professionals. And so there's this little small size and oh my goodness, like you want to talk about something smelling like a tropical vacation. It's that, it's so good. Okay, so this full moon is also a great time to dig into your studies of philosophy, spirituality, foreign language, cultural immersion, right? I'm like, open up the Duolingo app and kind of refresh yourself if you have a language that you haven't been um, maybe studying. And I already mentioned taking a trip, but another way to kind of like travel is astral cartography. Um, this is... This is a form of astrology. It's the astrology of place. I love to look at it for people um, and really pay attention to the lines and the angles. And then, of course, like the design gates that are associated with it. Uh, it's so fun to me. I mean, like, there's so many layers of like how you can interpret this stuff. But astrocartography is a really cool thing. You discover some really neat stuff, maybe about places you've always been drawn to. Um, the first time I ever went to Scotland, my being that's where my husband is from his whole family lives there uh it was like it just felt like home and it wasn't until you know i discovered that i was like oh no wonder i have jupiter on the midheaven running right through it so speaking of jupiter right it's like hey this is very beneficial so eventually we'll be back there um we go back all the time i mean live there again again I used to. Um, okay, so Sagittarius rules the ninth house, higher learning, world travel, philosophy, religion. It's also teaching, publishing, broadcasting, spreading wisdom that you've collected to the wider world. So that's another thing you look at your ninth house. Um, Sagittarius rules the hips and the thighs in medical astrology. So yoga poses like pigeon or log burner, um, they're going to be perfect for this, this transit. Uh, Sagittarius is typically a movement oriented sign and they're often, you know, naturally athletic people. So, you know, move your body. Um, like I said, it's the, th it's like mm, the thighs, <laughs> like what can you do to really work, to work those thighs? Um, yeah, <laughs> I'm laughing. You should see my notes on this. We're not going to read that. Um, fire signs right which includes Sagittarius they can definitely be kind of like quick quick on the draw a little reactive so make sure that you cool your heels and meditate um of course I will have a Sagittarius embodied beauty meditation for you to accompany this episode um and of course like take it into your treatment room use it during a facial or give yourself you know a facial mask a bath at home and listen to it um, again, fire sign. I love a fire pit, especially this time of year. So you could have a, have a nice outdoor fire, um, tomorrow on the full moon. You could also wear something greens, purples, blues. Those are the colors associated with Jupiter or even beautify your space with one of those crystals I previously mentioned, um, or like bringing in peonies or daisies. They're, they're flowers that are associated with Sagittarius. And of course, now we approach our journal portion, um, right? What do, what are we writing down to like let go of uh, to wrap up this cycle, literally, figuratively? Some people, you know, of course, I already mentioned the fire, but some people really like that for the full moons, you know, to burn that. I I always just write my stuff down because I want to come back and see it. Um, but I'm always like, whatever feels good for you. So with our journal prompts. Um, this, this full moon is taking place in gate five, another sacral gate. So it's sustainable life force. It's that energy that's like, if it's excited, if it's lit up, it's going to show up, you know, it's going to be, there's, there's going to be that sustainable energy for whatever, whatever that is. So if you want to hear all about gate five, that is episode 105. 
you feel like going back and listening and getting the, the full meal deal. Um, this energy, though, in short, is known as waiting. It's the gate of fixed patterns. It's the energy to set and repeat patterns, habits, and rituals in order to ensure a consistent flow. It's also known as patience in the I Ching. So it's very much, you know, I always like the sun rises, the sun sets, spring follows winter, you know, and so on and so forth. Um, I think about, I have a very specific morning routine. You know, I get up, get my skincare on, meditate, go for a big walk, listen to lectures. Like I have a way I start my day, come home, have coffee. Um, where it's just like, this is a routine that helps anchor me and helps me feel like very grounded, you know? And if I, if I don't have my normal routine, again, I'm just traveling, um, try to do my best you know i do I, I still do as much as i can but you know like you're just kind of out of out of your thing that um really like as it helps to helps to ground you helps to anchor you um yeah so my journal prompt here what supportive routines rhythms and rituals light me up and how can i incorporate them into my every day and I was thinking about that. I'm like, you know, when I travel, it's like, okay, I don't get to walk outside necessarily. Sometimes you get to, you know, but it's like, all right, well, I'm going to swap that for the treadmill, but I'm still going to get my, still going to meditate. I'm still going to, you know, support my body in the way that I need to. I'm, I have to be, learn to be flexible, but I still, you know, you still, still want to have those, those um, supportive routines. So let's take that question right? Um, and we're going to run through all 12 signs briefly. So make sure you listen for your rising sign, because that's the one you're going to apply this to, to, to understand how it's affecting you astrologically. So our equation is we have a full moon, right? So culmination, ending, shining a light on this area, letting go, gate five, and then the house. So for Aries rising, it's higher learning, world travel, philosophy, and religion. Taurus rising is shadow work, power, and control, and deep transformation. Gemini rising is one-on-one -on -one relationships, partnerships, and collaborations. Cancer rising is everyday work, habits, routines, health, and wellness. Leo rising is creative, self-expression, fun, children, romance, and charisma. Virgo rising is home, environment, family, nurturing, and heritage. Libra rising is the mental plane, communication, local travel, and socialization. Scorpio rising is the physical body, personal possessions, values, and wealth. Sagittarius rising is the self, personal identity, and appearance. Capricorn rising is spirituality, healing, surrender, retreat, and mysticism. Aquarius rising is community, friend groups, social network, and humanitarianism. And Pisces rising is career, professional and public status, discipline and achievement. So, for example, for myself, I'm a Virgo rising. I'm a Pisces sun, but Virgo rising. This impacts my fourth house of home and family. So, um, it's funny, uh, like it's just in Nashville and it was with Josh, Fox Josh, um, he's buying a new house or closed on the house <laughs> today and we were talking a lot about feng shui and you know since i came home i was like okay i'll send you notes and like okay these are the big crystals that we're going to work with in the house so i'm like sending him all these notes and we we're just chatting about that like creating solid of solid and supportive routines and in my case i was like oh yeah, I want to. I want to do that. I want to revisit that in my own house. Um, again, this this focusing on my home section of my chart, and you know, what am I trying to do? I'm trying to help balance it with the tenth. The tenth house is work. That's the opposite here. Um, and I'm like, yeah, I just want to create like nurturing, like just just the good vibes. And sometimes too, I have crystals all over my house. And certain things in certain places and it's like sometimes it just needs that like refresh you know as i was talking about changing the sheets it's like oh you know what actually let me go ahead and dust this area or cleanse this or what have you just kind of give it a little bit of attention again if it's been a long time if it's something that sits on the shelf which i have things like that and just sort of just re-up it right um, and of course, like my intention here is just like 
just loving on my babies, having fun this summer with my kids. All right. If you would like a Sagittarius beauty ritual, as I already mentioned, you can listen to the beauty ritual meditation for this full moon in Sagittarius. That'll be out along with this episode. Of course, like I said, take it into the treatment room, do it at home for yourself. I always do mine with my little fox blue legume. Um, and, you know, I'm obviously recovering from my my cool peel from Rianne. So I definitely think I'm going to slather on an extra thick layer for the for the full moon. All right. I will be back soon with more. Um, if this episode was of value to you, I would love it if you would leave a five-star rating and review on Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen. Just helps so much, you know, get the get the information out, make it discoverable for more people. And of course, if you want to learn more human design, free guide. The link is in the show notes and in my Instagram bio at Michaela McLean, the $11 classes, my course, your energetic marketing guide slash human design 101 um, and trainings and all the cool things coming soon. I will let you know. Um, until next time, have a beautiful day.